All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Hi, everyone. Uh, this is Nadi. Pink again. And today we're going to talk about Chinese tea ceremony. Chinese tea ceremony. How do we know it's the best moment to talk about a Chinese tea ceremony? Because I broke my favorite one. <laughs> now, uh, re really, an hour ago, I broke my favorite pot. Um, we are actually going to uh, discuss, uh, by the way, it's not an Yixing clay pot. It's a simple pot it, that doesn't have like uh, fine lines and all. Uh, maybe that's the reason why it broke, but I'm not sure. Anyway, we're going to order another one. And uh, we are going to talk later about some clay pots, different tools. So as I said, exactly the right moment. Mm -hmm. We also will talk about uh, the tools and uh, different tools for different types of tea. As much as different people these days drinking tea in different ways, in different trays, in different, different tools. Exactly. So were the Chinese uh, hundreds of years ago, thousands of years ago, in different places, in different areas, mm -hmm. they used to drink tea differently. Yeah. So we will be drinking um, loose tea, Mao Cha, from 2018. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's still quite young, getting mature. And um, it's a daily tea, it's a simple tea. It's definitely, it's definitely a morning tea. Let's put it here. Oops, okay. Mm -hmm. Definitely a morning tea. Um, so it's like we're a little on the edge and now it's about 4, 4 p.m. here in Israel, in Tel Aviv. So we're like, um, we're, we're going to drink, drink a bit. Um, and speaking of uh, Chinese tea ceremony and and uh, in a more traditional way, it's called Kung Fu Cha. Kung Fu Cha. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about, uh, you want to talk about the name uh, Gong Fu Cha. Mm -hmm. Gong the name Fu of uh, Gong Fu Cha. In English, it's written uh, G-O-N-G-F-U. Uh, but in Chinese character, it has the two different ways to write it. Uh, the first is uh, Gong Fu. Uh, it's written like this. And this one actually Gong. is the most... Uh, uh, accurate and it's the right uh, character to write Gong Fu Cha. It literally means um, exclusive art. Skill. Skills. Yeah. Uh, and this term is originally from Guangdong, uh, Chiuzhou uh, area. Just because of the English, it's like written Gong Fu and people are like a little bit confused about which gong is that? Because you know, in Chinese, yeah. there's a lot of words uh, written but uh, is differently, it? but sounds the same. I think that what makes people confused because exactly because kung fu or gong fu usually refers to something uh, uh, to martial arts, to self defense, to something aggressive, and uh, Chinese tea ceremony is a lot of things. Aggressive mm -hmm. is not mm -hmm. one of them. So uh, yeah. it, 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 uh, uh, the, the definition of, of the term is mostly concerning the skill and the art. art. And, uh, mm -hmm. and also I found, correct me if I'm wrong, I found something really cute. I found that a definition says uh, spare time, spending time, which is very, very related to, uh, to what we're doing when we drink tea. We're spending time. We're spending okay. time together because Gong Fu Cha uh, above all, is a host. It's something social. You 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 usually don't drink tea alone. You host people to your home, enter them to your welcome them to your home, and drink tea with them, with them. This is actually one of the foundations, right, of the of the Chinese culture, the South Chinese culture. Chinese tea comes from the south of China, all over the the south of China, yeah. and uh, and. What I really, what I really like, of course, I didn't grow on this, on this uh, culture. And ten years ago, you, you would have asked me about the Chinese tea ceremony. I would never imagine mm -hmm. how rich it is, how uh, how creative it is, 
And uh, it's we, also been for a, uh, a lot of years of revolutions. We are going to try to go through the history and the main, the major uh, changes that are relevant to how we drink tea today. Mm -hmm. And but there's a lot of things that are always related, right? Always accompanied uh, the Chinese tea ceremony is not only the aesthetics, all right, that everything has details and mm -hmm. everything is in place. It's also the flowers. Every time we host tea ceremony, she goes to buy fresh flowers. I put the incense. I even wrote, I even read something really nice about the type of incense that are more, um, that are better for, because of the scent. And then serve the authentic experience to the Israeli audience to let them feel the hospitality and exactly. and if people are are so into Chinese the tea like us it's also considering as uh, self meditation mm -hmm. through the practice through uh, the understanding with the tools that you're using and to find the the best taste for you yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And as any other great meditation uh, mm -hmm. session, after the meditation comes. And then you drink a cup of tea. Yeah, let's drink a cup of tea. I do it way less elegantly than her. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Got a color. So, um, but we're definitely drinking tea that is not a modern tea. This is, uh, mm -hmm. uh, I would even say, primitive uh, tea that is uh, still being used in China in, uh, um, a, with, with my, by, by minorities, uh, in, um, also in, in small it, ethnic groups, yeah. right? And also, um, by that time... Uh, Chinese tea ceremony are also influenced by the religions. We have mm -hmm. the Zen Buddhism. We have the uh, uh, the the uh, Taoism. Mm -hmm. uh, also by Confucianism, and um, and what I like about it is that uh, uh, a lot of them influence uh, through the years the development mm -hmm. of the tea ceremony in different er in different areas and different eras. Uh, and I'm sure they didn't used to call it a ceremony, or right? they were yeah. just drinking tea. Yeah. As much as today we have so many types of tea, but back then they used to uh, uh, simply call it tea. So yeah. let's go back to uh, Tang, Dynast Tang Dynasty. Mm -hmm. We're talking about uh, at least 1500 years ago. Yeah. And uh, the tea back there was even different than this, like way different than this. Uh, clay pots were only started to appear, uh, if I remember correctly, they were not uh, meant for, um, at first, they didn't use the clay to, uh, to brew the tea, they used it to uh, uh, to store it, mm -hmm. all right? Until today, clay is a great, um, is a great option uh, for storing the tea. Mm -hmm. um, and... Uh, the process, the, the ceremony, so-called, uh, were was very, very uh, complex. We're talking yeah. about uh, at least 30, 40 different uh, tools in order to make the tea. Mm -hmm. People used to, uh, uh, um, uh, even boiling the water was a process. And I think in, 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 in those times, uh, um, the effort, like the energy was concerning like um, operating mm -hmm. like operating the whole the whole thing was complex enough all right it's not the time like uh, like later on when uh, uh, when in Song Dynasty and Ming Dynasty mm -hmm. people used to take care about the leaves about uh, growing the leaves and the size and the shape mm -hmm. and the mythology and the names in in Tang Dynasty you didn't have time for it you were bothered so much with making the tea, mm -hmm. all right, with making the fire, with boiling the water, with uh, with uh, with compressing the the cake. They used to make the tea into into powder layer. It also influenced the Japanese tea that come directly copy paste from China to Japan, and um, 
mostly from the eastern part. And, uh, and that was the main uh, uh, focus back then. Uh, in uh, Song Dynasty, uh, I think the clay pot became uh, more in use, maybe more simple, not that uh, precise and aesthetic and, and, and buzz, because there's, there is still uh, uh, quite a big buzz. Look at the color. Amazing. Yeah. Look at the color. Um, let them see. Colors. Let's take this away. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, we don't filter the raw pour usually. Uh, this is also a part of our habits in Chinese tea ceremony. If you're going to see tomorrow other people filtering, I mean, with an infuser, uh, the, litter, the, 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 the little parts of the tea leaves mm -hmm. doesn't mean that what we're doing here is wrong or doesn't mean yeah. what they're doing is wrong. Uh, it just means that everyone uh, um, they have their own preferences exactly mm -hmm. song dynasty they started to use more clay the guy one the 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 the, the porcelain was not uh, was not present yet uh, so in a way the use of clay pot um, uh, not glossy uh, clay pot is more ancient than the use of guy one uh, the ceremony uh, all over China, like the, the process, the making of tea, uh, became more simple. Uh, the Chinese had more, uh, more time mm -hmm. to pay attention to details. All right. Yeah. The clay pot became nicer. The other, the other accessories uh, uh, became more, more, more details. They put their heart in it. Mm -hmm. And... Um, and also the process became became easier, uh, but I think it was until Ming Dynasty yeah. that it became uh, like the art, the skills became not only more similar to what we are doing today, but also uh, uh, pushing it to the extreme. We are talking about yeah. the golden era of Chinese tea, mm -hmm. exactly where uh, where uh, uh, monks monks started. Mm -hmm to uh, copy the Chinese tea series ceremony to Japan, to their place. Like they're doing yeah. it in the Japanese way. Mm -hmm. So today there's a lot, a lot of these similarities between, uh, between the Japanese and the, and the Chinese, Chinese tea exactly. series ceremony. What people don't know is that it's mostly because the, ja the Chinese one was keep developing more fast and more just spread, spread better. It's, Mm -hmm. It's a bigger country. It's a way, way bigger culture of tea. The, the importance of tea in China is way larger and greater than in Japan. It's impossible to compare. And uh, at least concerning uh, uh, preparing tea, mm -hmm. the Japanese were more conservative exactly. about it. And also, uh, it's not only about the culture-wise. It's uh, considering the environment. Chinese is the only country to grow uh, five different types of tea. Yeah. So for different types of tea, we have different tools for um, completing the whole tea ceremony. When uh, speaking of Japan, they only grow green tea. So mm -hmm. um, um, when we talk about the, the, the base, we already have a huge mm -hmm. difference. Exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, um, so I think also uh, we should mention that in Ming Dynasty, there was another big change. Mm -hmm. uh, we talked about uh, comp compressing the tea yeah, into tea, tea cakes. Tea cakes. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of opinions why in China they, to, they used to compress the Chinese tea cakes. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and the outcome of it uh the i think the main two is 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 about first about about conveniency all right yeah. the tea can be can be can be stored for longer we are talking about times without uh mm -hmm. without uh, meters and fridge and and and, uh, and packing abilities so mm -hmm. like tea all, was mostly fresh yeah and also compressed to the tea cakes is also good for the transportation it's good for the trading and then uh, when the, in the beginning of uh, Ming Dynasty, the empire called Zhu Yunzhe, mm. uh, this uh, em uh, emperor 
literally changed the whole way yeah. of storing tea. Exactly. Which is from the tea cakes to loose tea. Yes. Yeah. In one day, you just you just decided, guys, stop with the compressing. All right. Mm -hmm. And uh, I want to see some loose tea here, Mao Cha. Yeah. And once he decided he wants to see the loose leaves, uh, I think it was about politics, about corruption, something. Yeah, actually, uh, the empire, uh, he grew up with a very poor families. So the whole the, um, uh, policy of for him to rule uh, China, he wants everything to go back to simple. He wants nice. to save the money. He doesn't want to see any corruption because uh, apparently yeah. a lot of uh, politicians want to send him a great expensive tea to him. Yeah. And then one day he just decided, let's cancel it and let's go back to simple. Let's go back to simple, to loose tea. And I think, I personally think that uh, this, this point in history changed a lot. Yeah. When you when you start using the loose leaves, then uh, uh, you don't powder the tea anymore, and you store it in a different way. Uh, maybe the shelf lives also are different. Definitely, definitely the tools. And I think one area that is most symbolic with the ancient use of loose tea is Wui San, mm -hmm. right? The Wui Mountains, which mm -hmm. is our next. Let's drink it. Our next tea, yeah. right? So we are moving from Tang Song Dynasty area. Asian time. Yeah, even though this clay pot is very modern, we will soon. Soon I'm getting to clay pot. So. Uh, but let's drink a little Wu Yan Cha, rock tea. Ping's favorite tea. Yeah. Ping's favorite tea. Um, we are changing the cups. Why not? Because everything became more ceremonial. Yeah. In Wu Yishan. All right. We, we, you, you, you can go out and say it out loud that the way we are drinking tea today is similar, can be, can be similar, can be related to, uh, uh, to the development, to the evolution of, of tea ceremony in, in, uh, in, Wui, in Wui San, in Fujian province, even though uh, um, the basic terms and uh, uh, some of the some uh, some of the com components, uh, the materials used in the tea ceremony are related to Guangdong area. But take a look at the map. All right, you will see mm -hmm. that the area, uh, the, the 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 east part, the eastern part of Guangdong province, is not so far away than a small Fujian province from yeah. Wuxian. Today, I think we can do it within a few hours train. And uh, there's a lot of similarities with the tea as well. Uh, rock tea and dansong. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of similarities in these areas. So uh, so uh, it's it's safe to say that it's, an, that it's evolutionary. It's safe to say that it's a combination. We were talking about the beginning of the use of loose tea and immediately uh, uh, jumped to Wuishan, but actually in the middle, Guangdong area has uh, has a big part in yeah. in uh, in um, in designing uh, the tea ceremony, the parts and the steps, which we are going to talk about. The seven steps of uh, Chinese tea ceremony, mm -hmm. Gong Fun Cha. We are boiling the water, yeah, but it's, it's the time to say that uh, these are like a common seven steps. This is yeah. Ping seven step. Mm -hmm. You can come up with five. You can come up with eight. Uh, there were times they came up with 13 and even more than 20 yeah. steps of making tea. Uh, it doesn't mean you're not you're not doing the Gong Fu Cha ceremony. You need to come here with mugs of coffee and uh, all sort of uh, electronic machine mm -hmm. before we will tell you, guys, this is not Gong Fu Cha ceremony. Yeah. But the whole idea, if you... If you want to talk about differences between Chinese and J Japanese, then Japanese is way more strict. And the Chinese tea ceremony, it's something that has, um, it's, an, it, it's, an, it's an agenda, all right? Yeah. And you have a lot of space uh, uh, to express yourself. Mm -hmm. It's more, it's more, it it's more flexibility. Yeah, flexibility. flexibility. And this is one thing I really like about it because we can wake up in the morning, decide we're going to drink 
yeah. this tea with this cup with this uh, this time amount of time and nobody can stop us yeah all right exactly so the water is ready the first step uh usually is to warm the tools that you're going to make um uh, there's a clay pot and gawan but just because i'm using gawan so i don't need to warm the gawan then the second part we just the pool, the tea, and the bamboo tray. Not on top. I'll just do it very quickly. So kind of dark, less aromatic, um, soft. Mm -hmm. I like this tea. I like it. And sometimes. <laughs> then the third one just winds the tea. Mm. Rinse, r rinsing the tea. Rinsing the tea. Very quickly. And the cups as well. Mm -hmm. In order to warm the cups, mm -hmm. this the uh, certain temperature. So pink is like is is pouring the tea from the guy one to the Gong Dao Bay. Gong Dao Bay mm -hmm. uh, pitcher. Uh, and um, and then she pours she pours the tea to the cups. Uh, we have three cups here, even though it's just two of us. But actually, um, uh, we talked earlier about the roundness, the circle uh, shape uh, of... Um, Step six. Of Zen Bo uh, Buddhism. And it's not a coincidence to see a lot, a lot, a lot of round, of round shapes as much as the cups. Um, and uh, the size, the material, the thickness, juice, juice. And the last time. step, you can drink. All right, the last step. Um, oh, oh, beautiful. Very beautiful. Good. beautiful, refreshing. We were serving three cups, not two, uh, because we're only the two of us. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, traditionally, we would try to keep the ceremony round all right three cups not four four is square uh three cups five cups we want to keep the aesthetic we want to keep the table round because look at it everything every detail is trying to keep the flow moving we have the kettle which is keep running and boiling the the water of course it's, it's something it's something modern but people used to literally keep the fire on uh to keep the water uh, uh, warm or boiled yeah, uh, sure until until a certain point because if you overbrew the, the the water don't get me wrong if you overbrew the water it's not good for them mm -hmm. but um, uh, the idea is to keep it to keep it going uh, so pink will always be able to reach and and uh, to reach to the kettle and have boiled water mm. warm water. And then she has the guy one or the clay pot, which is in a certain capacity, usually between 120 mil to 220 mil. Mm -hmm. Even though they're like extreme, they're like smaller, smaller, small, smaller capacity tools. And then uh, uh, move, moving it to the pouring it to the Gong Dao Bay. Again, we are pouring every Gong Dao Bay is always uh, has a larger capacity than it really needs. This is because we are trying to chill the tea. Yeah. By the time, look at these steps. By the time the tea arrives to your small, thin cup with the shape that helps the steam and the heat go away, by the time it reaches your cup, it's already good to drink, ready to go. Exactly. This is, this is a fundamental of the tea ceremony. If we would come here with big mugs, if we would come here with... Uh, with I don't know uh, big piles of water. If we would come here with different tools, we would sit here, all right, chilling our tea until it's ready to roll. And this is not the idea. The tea is a company, the host. We want to talk with our guest. We want to be able. Look, we are pouring tea while we're talking to you, mm -hmm. and um, and it works. All right, mm -hmm. it works because the tea. Ceremony is quite simple. It's flow. It's yeah. it's flowing. 
I also want to add something in terms of uh, social manners. Um, when I pour tea to the guests, uh, I won't uh, pour it with a full cup. Mm, right. Yeah. Right. Why? Because, you know, as the tea is it's, uh, in a high temperature, so if you pour tea in the full cup, it's very difficult for our guests to hold the cups mm -hmm. and drink it. And, and more time to chill. So it's like yeah. you usually feel it like around 70, 80%, right? Mm -hmm. That's a good one. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it's a good time also to talk about, uh, we, we, didn't, we didn't mention, oh, we did mention about the filter. Just for demonstration. Mm -hmm. We're not big fans of uh, filters. We have this one, filter. Yeah. We're not big fan of we are we are not big fans of filter. We like we usually like drinking tea mm -hmm. uh, unfiltered. I think it's because of the types that we usually drink. Yeah. Uh, more than more than seventy percent of the time, you will catch us drinking either poor or wulong, because this is our specialty. Yeah, and and, and for people uh, usually uh, poor tea with filter, it it doesn't matter. It's really up to you. There's some quality that you can miss while filtering but it not necessarily means it's 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 good or bad it's a preference um i think the most interesting question or issue we are we are um we hear these days is about uh the buzz around clay pots and the use of gaiwan yeah uh, i think people will be very very surprised to hear that i would be brave and say that <laughs> Almost 99% of the time, people in China will use Gaiwan. Yeah, exactly. I mean, everywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, it, all, it, it, it depends on the area. It also depends on the type of tea. If we were drinking uh, regularly green tea and red tea, maybe we would use a filter. Maybe we would use more of different, of different pots. Mm -hmm. But uh, because we are mostly going to Fujian and Yunnan uh, pro provinces, Use the use of clay pot is very, very, very rare. Yeah, you I really see it. Yeah, I remember the few times that uh, professional uh, hosts, professional uh, um, uh, tea, mm -hmm. tea, tea host, um, were using uh, the clay pot. I even, I even remember one specific time that I can guarantee that the girl was pouring the tea with clay pot because I'm a foreigner to show up by the way it was one of the most beautiful clay pots yeah. i've ever seen i remember i yeah. still uh i'll still take a look at it every time yeah. before i go to sleep <laughs> but um uh, i would I, I would love to put my hands on it it yeah. was beautiful with a huan yao uh, mm -hmm. and um but uh, personally i enjoyed uh, using guy one more than clay pot Personally, I, 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 I would say that uh, in the morning, drinking my raw pour, mm -hmm. I prefer the clay. And um, we are not that picky about it because I know people are choosing the, the, the color and the type of the clay. Uh, I can um, show people how cool. Yeah. We do, we do reserve uh, each clay pot to a specific type of tea. We don't even mix... Uh, uh, shoupu and shampoo, right? Raw and and uh, and uh, cooked. This is for actually for only aged poor. I also really oh. enjoy the uh, okay, except the guy one. I really enjoy using this pot to pour um, age poor pour. Age poor. It does yeah. have difference. The most accurate tea will yeah. always be a guy oh. one. Uh, it's the the size. Uh, and the shape are meant for brewing tea. Mm -hmm. The glossy and the material, uh, the, the, the shape, the capacity. Yeah. Everything is is focusing on the finest, the most neutral mm -hmm. cup of tea. But what, what I realized is that in Rapur, it's not exactly what I'm looking for. Yeah. Every day is a different day. Every morning is a different morning. And yeah. you know what? When, we, when we're waking up... In, in the morning, in a way, I want to feel that the cup of tea of today is today cups of tea. Yeah. And uh, with wulong, that is more, uh, more, more. It's more scented. It's yeah. more aroma oriented. You always mm -hmm. say it's more aroma oriented, and 
in a way, our approach is to reach this preciseness, to reach what, what, uh, what the team master uh, meant to do. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is something that can really be reached with using Gaiwan. I think also in terms of the combination of Gaiwan with Wulong, mm -hmm. we are doing something uh, uh, very specific with Jiaguani, yeah. all right? And we have we have a special 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 guy one. It's a it's a guy one for from clay, but it it is glossy. Uh, we receive it as a present. Yeah, from our Taiwanese uh, uh, one of supplier. our Taiwanese uh, suppliers, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe I shouldn't touch it because uh, last time I touched it, I <laughs> I broke it. That's the actual <laughs> story of the podcast, by the way. Now he's breaking <laughs> things. And since then, Take it away from me. And since then, I only use this guy one to make uh, Tiaguanin. Yeah. And since then, I don't use it mm -hmm. to make Tiaguanin, but I love the way you make the Tiaguanin. Mm -hmm. The capacity, it's perfect. Yeah, about 100, um, 100 mil. Yeah, and it's so handy. And of course, the materials, everything is just, you know, make, make it the best. I think one important thing is to know that Chinese tea ceremony is not something uh, that is only technical. Yeah. It's not something that uh, is is everything has to be accurate and uh, and uh, there's and no right and wrong. There's no right and wrong. Yeah. There's no black and white. There's yin and yang, and yin and yang always always uh, 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 flow and fill and feed each other. All right. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think you can have your own perspective. You can have your own uh, um, uh, expression to it mm -hmm. and uh, treat it with mind and soul all right make it something that is yours yeah, all right and yeah, feed yeah. your soul and uh, feel it feel the tools the tea the sense the atmosphere and make it uh, yours make it yours yeah that's about it yeah, thank you so much time. for watching and Soon we're going to see you guys in the next video for what kind of topic? I don't remember. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> see you next time. Bye.